Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. As always, I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, I'm Mark, welcome to Fit and Fire. And if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, the best way you can do that is by subscribing. Uh, if you are interested as well and you think I did a good job with this video, go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can get notifications of the new stuff that's coming out as well. So my question to you guys right off the bat is, what is your favorite barrel length when it comes to an AR-15. Mine varies depending on what I'm looking to do, but one of the things that I have a fondness of, one of the things that I am uh, nostalgic about is going to be the classic AR-15 with a 20 inch barrel. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. We're gonna be talking about this guy right here. This is the Palmetto State Armory classic AR-15 with the 20 inch barrel. Now, this takes me back quite a ways uh, to when I joined the military. I joined the army in 2000, so uh, I was lucky in the fact that I got to see what life was like before uh, the war started, <laughs> and, uh, obviously with 9-11 and everything. Uh, and this was the rifle that I carried in basic training. Uh, I was a 19 kilo and I started uh, at Fort Knox at One Stop Unit Training or OSUT uh, basic training. And that required me to be there for four months. I had four months worth of basic training and uh, good times, good times. Uh, so I get really nostalgic when it comes to the classic AR-15. This is basically going to be an M16, A3, A4 variation. I did carry an A2 and then in Afghanistan, I carried uh, one of these as well. But again, that was an A2. This is going to be an A3 or an A4 because it's going to be a flat top receiver. So the, char or the carry handle here will be um, able to come off. And then you guys can argue the facts down in the comment section if you want, but A3s would not have the quad rail. It would have these hand guards here. Or if I was to switch this up and put a quad rail on it, then it would be kind of an A4 clone. But um, anyway, this video, I wanted to talk about a couple different things. So this may run a little bit longer than what my normal videos do. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you guys about kind of saving some money. I think this is going to be one of the better clones that you can buy that is going to not impact the wallet uh, so much. Naturally, you can buy a Colt or you can buy an FN or you can even buy... Uh, one of these from like Aero Precision, and they're going to be a thousand, fifteen hundred, approaching two thousand um, dollars or more. But this one right here, under seven hundred dollars, if you can believe that. So let's get into the reasons why. Number one is I bought this as a build kit. And a little known fact, uh, some of you may know this, a lot of you may know this, but some of you may not. So please indulge me here in just one second. Uh, but one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that the government will place an 11% tax on every completed firearm and ammunition purchase here in the United States. Meaning that if I was to go out and purchase this, just like this is right here, then I'm going to automatically pay 11% more than it would if I was to buy this as a build kit. And that's one of the great things about Palmetto State Armory is that PSA has some really great build kits um, that you guys can pick up and still save a lot of money. Also, you will save a little extra money because that 11% tax is not placed on it. It has to be a completed firearm or it has to be a manufactured ammunition in order for the government to put that tax on that item. I'm a proponent against taxes. I believe taxation is theft, uh, but that's a discussion for, <laughs> for another time. So that's one great way to uh, pick up a clone or just a, any type of AR on, on the cheap is by looking into build kits. Now, naturally, PSA does really, really great with a lot of variations on barrel lengths and different uh, setups and so on and so forth, but there's other companies out there that do really good as well. Obviously, Aero Precision is another big uh, favorite of mine. I re you know recommend them to a lot of people. 
And then there's other companies out there. Uh, BCM, they do a great job as well. Uh, they are going to be a little bit higher on the cost because, you know, they, they, they do a lot better job when it comes to QA, QC. Their tolerances are going to be a lot better when it comes to mil spec type stuff. And um, they, you know, they're just a great company. Uh, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, they do great uh, kits as well. So, you know, just there's a lot of different companies out there. So just keep in mind that even though I'm talking about PSA, doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't others out there as well. I will say that PSA is probably going to be your better option when it comes to picking something up that is going to be a little bit more budget friendly and still give you a good quality rifle. Are they perfect? No. Do they have QA, QC concerns? Uh, yeah, they do. Um, I acknowledge that. But I also know and have talked to uh, PSA directly, uh, not only face to face, but also through email and phone conversations. They're really working hard to uh, correct those issues and uh, become better each and every single day. So that's my little commercial for PSA, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, just so you know, uh, my relationship with PSA, I am an affiliate with them. Uh, so if you do pick up one of these, I will get a small commission off of it. But they did not send this to me for free. I actually purchased this build kit myself. Um, I did have some help from my Patreon crew, so I really do appreciate that from them. But by and large, uh, the piece that I wanted to let you guys know is that I bought this uh, from PSA, from their website, just as a normal person like anyone else would. So anything that I'm going to be talking about when it comes to this rifle is going to be exactly what you should expect from PSA when you purchase one of these. This isn't ha hasn't been personally selected by PSA to send it to me or anything. They didn't even know that I was doing this. I just bought it. <laughs> so let's do a real quick overview. This is going to be the premium build kit. Uh, just so you guys know, this is going to come with everything that you possibly can need to pull this together with the exception of the lower receiver and the carry handle and then obviously the magazine as well. So let's go ahead and remove the magazine. Weapon is clear. Um, so, one of the great things about this build kit is the fact that the upper receiver is going to come already built. So the uh, barrel is going to be assembled to the upper receiver. You will have to insert the bolt carrier group in the charging handle, but you don't have to worry about making sure that the barrel is torqued down to the upper receiver. Uh, you don't have to worry about any type of timing or headspace or anything like that. It's already done from the factory. About the only thing you really need to concern yourself about when assembling one of these build kits is going to be the lower parts kit and making sure that you get everything pulled together. Now, I will say that the um, AR-15 is like Legos for adults, so if you can follow simple instructions, you can watch some videos and do some things, you can pull one of these together. And that's, I will have to admittedly say, that's kind of the downside of build kits is that you're going to have to assemble it. So if you're not too confident with that or you don't have the tools to do it, maybe get a friend to do it or weigh your options, maybe spend a little bit extra money by <laughs> having to pay that excise tax and build one fully assembled. But I've built uh, about two a year for the last eight years and um, I feel pretty confident in my abilities to pull one of these together. In addition to that, I do have a friend who is purchasing their first AR-15. They're going to do a build so they get exactly uh, what they want, how they want it, and they've asked me to you know, assemble it for them. So I'm going to do that. All right, so let's talk about the overview of this uh, rifle all together. I already said that this is the premium kit, and the reason why it's the premium kit is because it comes with the FM barrel. Now you can purchase one of these without the FM barrel, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I had this particular barrel because you're getting a lot of quality out of that. And what do I mean by that is the fact that you're going to have a barrel that is MP and HP tested, and then it's going to be double chrome lined. It's also a cold hammer forged barrel. So you have the hardness, you have the chrome lining, you have the HPMP testing. So this is going to be a rock solid barrel and one of the most important aspects of your rifle to begin with. 
So that's one of the reasons why I went ahead and spent a little extra money to go ahead and get the, uh, the barrel. Now, when I did purchase this, the parts kit was $5.99. The lower receiver cost me another 50 bucks. So for $6.50, I was able to get this pulled together. I paid another 50 bucks for, um, for the carry handle at the time. I'm sure that the rates have gone up since then, but uh, by and large, this was put together for right at or under $700. And I think that's a really, really great deal. Uh, your A2 flash hider is rock solid. I mean, you can't beat it. It's not flashy, but it does the job, not only of uh, hiding flash, but also compensating as well. And then with the 20 inch barrel, it's going to do even better at hiding flash as well. This is an F stamped front sight base. Uh, so that's something that I really do like because you can rest assured that it's going to be the proper height for your detachable carry handle. In addition to that, you're gonna have your standard A2 front sight post, which is awesome. Uh, you have your heat shielded hand guards here. I do have a quad rail and I issued a question to my Instagram folks whether or not I should keep this or um, switch it out and resounding. I had everyone say, go ahead and swap it out, put the quad rail on and turn this into a DMR. And I think I'm going to do that to allow my daughter to be able to use this to hunt. So um, here in my state, you can hunt with 223. So I think that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Lower and upper receiver are 7075 T6 aluminum. So that's definitely what you should expect. Uh, A2 buttstock with the trap door on the back. So if you want to put a cleaning kit or something back there, you can. A2 pistol grip and then a uh, mil spec trigger with the flat uh, non-enhanced trigger guard. So that is definitely uh, a huge plus there. So let's go ahead and do the granddaddy thing and ghost this trigger. Uh, this is a pretty decent mil spec trigger. Not too much creep on, uh, on it at whatsoever to get to the wall. In fact, there's really no slop in it whatsoever, but there is about a millimeter or two play as you put pressure onto that trigger and some some creep in it until it breaks there so it's about a six pound trigger right there and then your reset loud audible tactile you're going to feel it and breaks again so a little bit of a creep in that trigger i will say that the colt 6920 um, mil spec trigger is probably the best that i've ever messed with, but uh, realistically at the range running the one through five drill, I didn't really notice to be honest with you. Yeah, I can tell the difference between this and a Geisley trigger, but realistically this is still doing uh, a great job. I've ran about 500 rounds through this and uh, once I had it assembled, I didn't even oil it. I, I may have put a couple drops on the bolt to just run it a little bit to protect it while it's in the safe or whatever, but uh, I haven't cleaned it or lubed it since, and I've had zero issues whatsoever. In those 500 rounds, um, I have had zero failures to feed, failures to fire, failures to extract or eject, so that uh, says a lot of great things. If you haven't already seen Mr. Guns and Gear, he just did a video on one of these just a few days ago, so I would highly encourage you guys to check that out because he goes into a lot more detail on this than I possibly could. He's such a smart guy and really knows his stuff. All right, so the last thing I wanted to talk about real quick is whether or not this is a viable option for home defense. Now, if you guys have been watching the news, you know the McCloskeys, uh, they defended their home in St. Louis using a Colt uh, M16A2 clone. And uh, <laughs> a lot of things wrong with that, but at the end of the day, uh, Mr. McCloskey, he, he did uh, successfully defend his home with a 20 inch barrel. Uh, I will say that you can definitely use this to defend your home with? Sure you can. Is it gonna be a little bit more different than a carbine length or a AR pistol length barreled version of the AR-15? Yeah, 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 most definitely. But there's techniques that you can learn. Uh, if you get some training, I highly recommend everybody go out and get training. One of the things that I learned in the military when doing CQB stuff with a uh, full length rifle is 
once you get to a point where you're going to pie a corner, uh, if it's going to be too much of a problem to get around that, if it's too confined, then one great way is to place this right up on your shoulder, place the buttstock up on your shoulder, adjust your, uh, your grip a little bit, get your index finger behind the front sight post to kind of prop that rifle out away from you and you should be able to pie that corner a little bit better. If you have to light off around, you have your index finger right behind the front sight post and you're going to be able to mitigate that recoil so you're not getting punched in the chin by the uh, rear sight. So some techniques, they teach that in uh, shotgun classes as well, but uh, that was a technique that I learned back in 2003 when I was learning uh, CQB stuff. So can you defend your home with this? Sure you can. Is it gonna be as good as a 12.5 or a 10.5 inch AR-15? No, no it's not. That, those will work a little bit better. But the one thing I will say about one of these things is that the 20 inch barrel version is going to maximize the velocity of the 5.56 round. Reno May, if you guys haven't catched his YouTube channel or are not following him on Instagram, I highly recommend you do that. He just did a video series talking about um, body armor. And one of the things that he mentioned, it's something I've been saying for years now, is that 3A body armor will not stop a projectile from a 20 inch barrel. Now, it does say that 3A body armor will stop 5.56, but that's from a 16 inch barrel, not a 20 inch barrel. The reason for that is you have more pressure being built, which increases the velocity and increases the power or the foot pounds of energy that will uh, be hitting a certain target. So that about covers it, man. Talked about ways to save money, talked about ways to um, uh, you know, defend your home, did an overview on this. Uh, I really do like it. It's nostalgic to me. I l I've forgotten how soft recoiling this rifle is uh, with the 20 inch barrel. It's just, it's been a delight to shoot this. And this is gonna be in my collection for quite some time. Again, I'm gonna update it. I've had my fun with the carry handle and all that jazz, but I think I am gonna go ahead and swap out the hand guards to the quad rails, put a nice optic on here, probably from Primary Arms. Uh, Dimitri over there, he's an awesome dude. And uh, I talk to him on a regular basis and, and uh, uh, probably will hit him up, see about trying to find the perfect optic for this. And then maybe turn this into my, my daughter's honey rifle. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future, but I will continue to run this. And I'll get you some updates on down the road. So with that being said, man, that really covers it. I really do appreciate everybody's uh, support of the channel. Naturally, I want to say thank you to my Patreon crew. You guys rock can't do this without your guys' support financially. And then also with our Patreon live chats, I really do appreciate all the encouragement and support from there. If you guys uh, think about it, make sure you sound off in the comment section down below. Regardless of what you wanna say, I really would appreciate that. It helps with the algorithms, thumbs ups and shares really help as well. If you wanna support the channel, tons of links in the description below as well. All right, man, with that being said, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Take it easy, y'all. Bye now.